So welcome back to another episode of Five Minutes with Cyril. I want to talk today about the absolute orientation problem. So what is the absolute orientation problem? Why is it relevant? And how does a solution to this problem actually look like? Um, the absolute orientation problem always pops up if you want to align sets of 3D points. So let's say you have two sets of 3D points, maybe one stemming from an existing 3D model that you have and a second one from a sensor uh, such as a camera or a laser scanner that you just recorded locally and you want to align them with each other. You want to say, okay, where are my points which are just computed in a local coordinate system in the global coordinate system or in my map coordinate system? Um, if you know a few points, how they correspond with each other, so knowing which point that you've locally observed is which point in your map, then the absolute orientation problem is for you because it allows you to compute the transformation parameters um, so that you can transform your points from your local uh, reference frame into the global reference frame. So this becomes pretty important if you, for example, have a camera, you move around your camera and build a local map of the environment, then this is typically a 3D point set which is only defined up to a scale parameter because you do not know the scale and you do not know where those points are in an external reference frame, in the GPS coordinate frame, for example, or in the frame of the BIM model of your building, for example. And if you want to relate them with each other, you need to have some correspondences. And once you have those correspondences, at least three, better more, you can actually compute the translation parameters, rotation parameters, and scale parameters so that these point sets get aligned. So you are basically you want to compute a least square solution saying, how do I need to transform my points so that the discrepancy between my transformed points and the points in my reference point sets is as small as possible. And again, we can express this through a similarity transform with seven degrees of freedom. Three degrees of freedom go into the rotation matrix, three degrees of freedom go into the translation vector, and one degree of freedom goes into the scale parameter. When you work with cameras, you need to actually fill all those seven degrees of freedom. If you work with a laser scanner, for example, that already um, has the scale information because it provides you with point sets with the correct scale, then your scale parameter lambda is equal to one and you don't need to care about it. But in the general case, we want to take that into account in the absolute orientation problem. So how do we do that? What we need to do is we need to minimize our objective function. So we can expand the term um, X bar, so the transform point set, um, a bit further and then this objective function looks slightly more complex but in the end it's not very difficult. Um, and then we need to actually minimize this objective function. So finding the parameter that minimizes this function. And this is fairly easy for the translation parameter and fairly easy for the scale parameter. We just compute the first derivatives, set it to zero and solve the remaining equations. It is, however, more tricky for the rotational part. Um, the rotational part, uh, for this, I need to perform a singular value decomposition, or SVD, um, which gives me two rotation matrices U and V, and I can de design a new rotation matrix out of this, combining um, V and U transpose, which turns out to be the optimal rotation matrix under this problem. Um, it's not very straightforward to come up with a solution. You can actually write it down and then prove that it's the optimal solution using something which is called the Schwartz inequality. You can basically show that there's no better rotation matrix than the one you get out of the singular value decomposition. And that's it. We are happy with it. We're taking it. So we can compute the rotation matrix R as V times U transposed, where V and U are two matrices from the singular value decomposition. We can compute the translation vector, which basically um, uses x0 and y0, which are the weighted means or the center of masses of my, um, of my two point sets, and the rotation matrix that I just computed before. And also the scale parameter looks fairly complex, but it's very simple to compute um, just using this expression over here. And through this, I get my seven degrees of freedom, the parameters for my similarity transform that allows me to, come to transfer the points from my local coordinate frame into a global coordinate frame, into a map coordinate frame, into a GPS coordinate frame, whatever I'm using, um, just based on a small number of corresponding points. I hope that was useful and gave you an idea what the absolute orientation problem is about. And even if you haven't fully understood the solution, um, what you should remember, it's basically a minimization problem that we're doing. Two parameters are really easy to compute. One is a little bit more complicated, but the SVD helps us to do that together with Schwartz inequality. And so you are able to compute a direct 
and optimal solution for these parameters out. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that was useful.